All right, this is 10-8. We're doing mixture problems. It's a lot like the problems we did in Chapter 8 with notebooks and calculators. So I'm going to use the box. Um, this is 10-8. Okay, so um, I know I put pounds there, but remember what we did? We did amount times a unit is equal to the product. Okay, and then what are we comparing? This is about mixing different kinds of nuts. So I've got my peanuts <coughs> and cashews. And remember, we add going up and down, and what we get is this mixture that they sell in the stores. Now, what kind of units are they talking? Money. Money and pounds. And which one am I talking about quantity of, would that be pounds would go over here and my money really kind of goes in the, right? Because we want to know, <clears throat> this money always kind of goes in that middle. So now the way, if you look at my PowerPoint, they say number of pounds. But again, I'm trying to give you a generic that you can always use. Okay, what can I place in my boxes? Where does the 12 pound mixture go? 12, yes. Mixture, bottom column. Bottom of the first column is gonna be my 12. Okay, and what about that 650? That, well, that's, that's kinda new, but do you know where to place it? Where do you think, Jordan? Um, the bottom last column. Do you think it goes here? Is that the total price of everything? Oh, never mind. No, it just goes in the uh, middle <clears throat> column. Middle column where? The bottom. Bottom middle, because it's now, this is the first time we've had an actual price for our mixture. That's the price of the combo. The peanuts are cheap, they're $3. The cashews are how much? So I'm taking like something that's really expensive and something that's cheap and mixing them. Okay, do we know how many peanuts? So what do we call it? X. Do we know how many cashews? What can we call it in relation to peanuts and the mixture? Phoebe? 12 minus X. And now we multiply across 3x, 8 times the quantity of 12 minus x, 78. <clears throat> now, my equation is 3x plus 8 times 12 minus x equals 78. Yes. I multiplied across, right? Every time. Yeah? Since I have a quantity in there, I have something to multiply. 12 times 650 is 78. Now I have 3x plus 96 minus 8x equals 78. I'm subtracting 96. And at the same time, I'm going to combine my like terms, and I get negative 5x. Negative 18 divided by negative 5. And x is equal to 3.6. What does that mean? What does that mean, uh, Jordan? There are 3.6 pounds of peanuts. And what else do I have the ability to find? Yep, Matthew? And how many do we have? 8.4. 11, 12, yeah. 8.4. Okay. <clears throat> do you find these confusing or are you understanding it? Because they're a lot like 
what we did in chapter eight. It's kind of the second time around. Okay, I think they're the easiest kind of word problems. Okay, they love to do these mixture problems with acids and things in chemistry. Acids, paints, butterfat. You're going to get it all. Okay, so the first one is quantity. And quantity is in what? Amount in what? What's the units for the amount? Liters, right. So your amount is going to be in liters. I would call this the amount. <laughs> Might want to say liters because the kids don't seem to know that. And then we've got times. What are the units? Percents is equal to the product. And then what am I comparing? Okay, guys, I'm comparing. I'm taking something really strong, a real strong potion, and I'm taking a weak potion, and I'm trying to make a diluted potion. Okay, acid. Make it real. I like to go Harry Potter style. Okay, so what am I comparing? Come on, they, they, it's all here. How about a 10% acid? is mixed with a 60%. So I'm going to call one the 10% acid and the other the 60%. And I'm going to call the other one the mixture, which is what? What do they want their mix to be? Right. The mix should be 40%. So now I have, where are we placing things? What's the percent of acid for the 10%? And I write 0 0.1 or 0 and 1 tenth. What are we putting for the 60% solution? 6 tenths. And for the 40%? 0 and 4 tenths. Where does the 120 go? <clears throat> un Unre? Okay. Where does the 120 go? Somebody else. Okay. In the total here? Did you say no or yes? What? Does it go there? What did I say the, the last... Right, it's quantity. This is amount column. So this is 120. Now, what do I place for the 10% Aurora? Um, do we know how much? No. So, we call it X. And what would the 60% then be? Um, 120 minus X. Yep. And we multiply across. 0 and 1 tenth X. Zero and six tenths. At, uh, sorry. <clears throat> Why did I say six? That should be an X. Times one twenty minus X equals zero and four tenths times one twenty. So this, I've got zero and one tenth X plus 0 and 6 tenths times 120 minus x equals, I'm going to multiply it out, 48. Now, I can right away, I can clear that decimal and multiply by 10, and I get x plus 6 times 120 minus x equals 480. x plus... 720 minus 6x equals 480. I'm getting, subtracting 720, right? Subtracting 720. 
I end up with negative 5x equals negative 240. Yeah? 720 minus 480. Yeah. And then we're... Now I get negative 5x equals negative 240, divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5, x equals 48. So if this is 48, what would the other one be? 72. Now, I always go back and see what it wants. How much of each solution? What units am I going to put for 48 and 72? Liters. Right, I'm going to need 48 liters of the 10% solution, and I'm going to need 72 liters of the 60% solution to make a 40% mix that is 120 liters. Does that make sense? Questions? <clears throat> All right, let's go to mixture problem number three. Ooh, we got two more problems at least to get through. Okay, this is a good one. Okay, now I'm mixing. Mitch holds a beaker containing 40 liters of a solution that's 20% salt. How much water must be added to make a solution that's only 8% salt? So I've got my amount times percent equals my product. And over here, I'm comparing what? Over here. I'm mixing what two things? The 20% solution with what? Water. Water to make what? An 8% solution. This is what painters do. So they don't have to buy, don't sit, t painters don't get mad at me if you watch my YouTube. So they don't have to buy lots of paint. They water it down, right? Okay. So what can be placed? What we know, what goes right here? Zero point Two. What goes down here? Zero and eight tenths. Is it zero and eight tenths? Whoopsie. That's 80%. Zero and um, eight hundredths, we would say. Zero point zero eight. Now, do we know how much of the 20% solution? So what? Are we, what? What? This time they said there's 40 of the 20%. Do we know how much water? Let's call it X. So what do you think? I've got two add-ins. What's the sum going to be? Yes. 40 plus X. 40 plus X this time. Now I'm missing one more box. What is the percent of salt in water? I'm mixing water with salt water. What percent of salt is in there? It's not brain surgery. It's implied. Yes. Yes. I'm asking you to answer the question. What percent of salt is in the water? It's zero. There's no salt. So when I multiply across... We end up, there's no salt in there. I get 0 0.2 times 4. Okay? 40, sorry. And then I get 0 times x is 0. And the next one is 0 0.08 times 40 plus x. Sorry. So now my equation is, I'm going to just multiply this out. It's 8 plus 0 equals, I guess I could just multiply this one out. 8 times 4 is 32. I have a 0, but now I've got to move over 3.2, right? 
3.2 plus 0 0.08x. I still want to clear it. Multiply by 100. 8 hundred equals 320 plus 8x. Subtract 320 and I am left with a... Okay, I need you to just wait. Equals 8x, right? Divide by 8, divide by 8. x is equal to? 60. So if I need to know, the water I'm putting in is 60 liters. Hold on. 60 liters. And if I want to find out the total liquid in the mix, it ends up being 100. So what did water end up being? Right. 60. Water ends up being what percent, though, of salt? Zero. So a couple things I want to do. Now we're doing um, paint. Paint has 50 gallons of paint that's 5% thinner. So this is really, right here, this is paint with, only, with just 5% thinner. But then what the painter does is they buy the thinner because it's cheaper and they pour it in the paint. And then they paint it on your house, right? So they have to buy less paint. Do you understand? Yeah. So... Do we know how much thinner we, ha we have? Well, it says we have 50 gallons of paint that's that, so it goes here. And we know that it's 5%. We've got that. Now, do we know how much thinner? It says how much paint thinner should be added, so what are we going to call that? X. Altogether, the quantity of the mix will be, what's it going to be? 50 plus X. Now, what is the thinner going to be? What's the percent? This is going to be 20%. Yes. No. Pure, pin, point, pure paint thinner. Pure thinner. 100% is what decimal? One. One. Okay, multiply across. Do you understand the idea? Okay, now I need to just explain a couple things from the homework tonight. So that's why you're just getting multiplied by one. Okay, when they talk about paint thinner, that's 100%. It's pure. If something's pure, it's 100%. If there's nothing in it, it's seen as 0%. So tell me, when we start talking about different kinds of milk, low fat, 1%, 2%, Whole milk, skim milk. What does skim milk have in it? No fat. Zero fat, exactly. Skim milk is non-fat, and non-fat is 0%. Are we good? Yeah. So that's what you need to know. All right, pause the recording. I'm going to go back to the interest problem to finish taping um, when fifth period starts. All right, so now we're going to do an investment problem. Now we're taking our money and we're investing it into stocks and bonds. Macy has $4,000 in stocks, paying 12% interest, and bonds paying 8% interest. If she earns $432 in one year, how much was invested in stocks? I use the boxes to also continue doing this type of problem. Again, I start with my amount. Remember, we multiply going across, and then I've got my, my units, which, what unit are we talking about? Huh? Well, it would really be, let's see, it, it's really, um, it's not just, we're comparing stocks and bonds, but it's not just the amount, it's, in this case, we're not putting our dollars there, we're putting our percent, our percentage rate. What are stocks and bonds? They're, they're items that you can invest in, in the market. So, 
Like, have you heard about the stock market? And, and then a bond is kind of like something you can invest in that's government issued. Um, all right. So I, my investment, again, it's still amount. Okay. That stands for amount. Notice we're, we're still multiplying going across. So what is the percentage rate for the stocks? What's the percentage rate for the stocks? Um, yep, Charlie? 12%. 12 so I've got to convert that to a decimal. So I can't do math with percents. Okay, and what is the percentage rate for the bonds? Vic? 8%, so it's 0.08. Yeah, be careful not to write 0.8. That's 80%. Now, it says Macy has 4,000 in stocks paying 12% interest and bonds paying 8% interest. What is that 4000 going into? Yes. The stocks and investment box? And what? The stocks and investment box? What's ba? Ba. Oh, box. Okay. Now, if it was just investments, I mean, if it was just stocks, then there would be a period after they talked about stocks. So really, that 4000 is going into what? Stocks and bonds. But I don't have a box there. So it's going into both stocks and bonds. It's not just stocks. It's not just bonds. It's going into both. Are you guys clear? Yes or no? Okay. What about that $432? Where is that going to get placed? Uh, let's go... Evan. Right. We're going to place that on the bottom of the total interest. Okay. Now, I'm going to take you back to third grade. Okay. I'm going to remind you. I've got this little diagram here. Remember when we used to say three plus two equals five? Right? Maybe first grade. And then they taught you. What if they gave you something like this? Shh. They didn't teach you inverse operations. Instead, they taught you to rewrite it. Rewrite it using your fact families. Okay? So this is what we, shh, we call an add-end and an add-end. When we add them together, we get a sum. So, can't we say, we know that inside that box it should be a 2. But can I write it as 5 minus 3? Isn't that the same thing? Yeah. I can say the total minus the add-end equals the other add-end. Do you understand that? If you understand from here to here, then you should be able to understand it. It's an add-end plus add-end equals my sum. Can't I also rewrite it as, let's call this add-end 1 and add-end 2. The sum minus add-end 1, sorry, 1 is equal to add end 2. Are you guys good with that? Okay. Um, so, when I go back to this one right here, how many stocks are we using? How much are we putting into our stocks? Do you know? Yeah. Minus bonds. Mm, no. Do we know how many stocks? No. So give it a name. A name we can use, X. Now, very close. If that's the case, now, Hayden, if I know I have my stocks is X amount 
my total is 4,000, what would my bonds be in relation to that? 4,000 minus X? Yes, it's the total minus the add-end. Do you understand that? Yeah. It, but it could also be 4,000 minus X, the stocks, and then... Yeah, if you want to do, but I always, we keep it pretty straightforward, and usually the first one we call X, yeah. the second one. Yeah. Okay, then we multiply across, I'm getting 0 and... 12 hundredths, and we multiply again, okay, and then we add going up and down. So my equation is, let me just, it's much neater this way, I'm going to take it onto another page. My equation is this. All right, so now, what do I need? I'm going to clear this. This is a term, this is a term, and this is a term. What do I need to multiply it by to clear the decimal? Julia? Uh, right, I'm multiplying everything by 100. Now I get 12x plus 8. Notice inside my parenthesis, I do not distribute there because I've already distributed outside equals 43,200. Okay, I'm going to simplify 12x plus 32. Okay, I'm going to subtract my 32,000 we get 4x equals 1 11,200 divide by 4 and what is x? x equals 2,800 Okay, so I take it back to the original problem, and I come back here. If x equals 2,800, that means I invested originally 2,800 in just stocks. What, what, what did I originally invest in bonds? 1,200. Okay, but they're only asking, in one year, how much was invested in stocks. So this would be the only answer. Yes. You can. You don't need to. I don't need to find that. I only needed to find this. I needed those to figure out what's it going to gain me. Twenty eight hundred plus twelve hundred equals four thousand. I know what the total is. I don't need to add it. Yes. So why did we subtract x from 4,000? Because I'm doing the total minus the add-end. It's like if this was 3 plus 2 plus an unknown amount plus something equals 5. Can't we say this is 5 minus 3, the total minus the add-end? Do you understand? Yes, Stephanie. I can. I mean, for you, you're going to put in an answer column, whatever. You know. All right. Okay, so I think we got to this point on the video, so I'm going to stop playing the video. That's pretty much the end of the lesson. Um, I'll, I'll do the last problem if I have time at the end, but uh, pause the, well, I'm going to pause the video.